Hey guys, and welcome to a sort of review on our criminal law unit. So uh, we covered criminal law while I was out on paternity leave. Little Ben is doing just fine, uh, but we are going to jump right into it and get started by talking about crime. What is crime? What are the causes of crime? What are the types of crime, All right? And so crime is a wrong committed against society. Now, this might only affect one person, but by breaking the law or uh, hurting someone within a society, you are breaking the societal contract, right? The social contract. We talked about it with Locke and Hobbes and Rousseau, and we're talking about it now, right? A crime is a crime against society because you are not respecting the rules of civil engagement, right? And so what are the goals of our criminal justice system, right? It's to control crime, it's to prevent crime, and it is to provide justice, right? Justice is one of the earliest legal concepts that we talked about. It sits at the center of the argument as to what is our goal in the criminal justice system. Uh, does justice mean punishment or rehabilitation, right? And so as we go on, we'll go further and further into these topics. We'll see that punishment and rehabilitation are sort of at the center of all this, right? So let's continue, all right? So how do we control crime? Well, we control crime by keeping criminals off the streets, right? If you arrest somebody, then they can no longer run around and commit another crime. Prosecuting criminals seeks to prove that society has been wrong, that they committed the crime, and that they are going to be held accountable, right? And so punishments are typically given to disincentivize future criminal activity. Right. This is very different from the rehabilitation idea, which is that we are trying to basically fix the person, fix the criminal, and reintegrate them back into society. Right. And so harsh punishment is supposed to dissuade others from committing crime. However, it typically doesn't work as many opponents of punishment will argue. Right. Rehabilitation is supposed to prepare the person to re-enter society in a way where they can be dissuaded from committing future crimes. But uh, as many critics of rehabilitation say, many uh, criminals relapse into uh, committing crimes after they are released. So there are pros and cons of each type of way of trying to prevent crime, right? So now we're going on to the types of crimes, right? And there are six types of crimes. You have violent crimes or what we call crimes against the person, right? These are the ones that movies get written about, uh, TV shows, cop procedurals. They love to deal with murder, sex, and robbery, right? Uh, property crimes are the most, you know, common form of crimes. This is like uh, trespassing. This is uh, stealing a car. This is, you know, shoplifting. All those things are property crimes. Why? Because you are taking someone's property, right? And as we know from John Locke, you are entitled to your life, liberty, and property. Whereas violent crimes tend to affect your life and liberty, uh, property crimes affect your property, duh, right? Public order crimes uh, basically go against public values, right? So this is public intoxication, gambling. Uh, these are usually called victimless crimes. Uh, prostitution is also considered a public order crime, right? We have white collar crime, right? These are economic, business, or personal crimes. Now they're very similar to property crimes, but because they typically deal with a different uh, substrate of the population, right? They're not stealing uh, necessarily physical things. They're dealing in information and embezzlement and things like that. Um, they have their own category, right? Organized crime is the use of legal businesses uh, or employees to commit illegal acts, you know? Typically, this is uh, money laundering. This is things like the mafia having a front house, right? And the sixth and last type of crime is high-tech crime, right? Uh, this is the latest one to emerge, and these are crimes uh, on the internet, and they are getting worse all the time. In fact, uh, the next world war is forecasted to be a war in cyberspace, right? Uh, these are, you know, interesting times as everybody's connected online, but there are very few protections for those people who are online, even now as we're learning uh, via distance learning, 
through the internet, right? And so the last thing we're gonna talk about uh, today is crime prevention and the criminal justice system, specifically the process of the criminal justice system, right? So there are eight steps in the criminal justice system, right? And we're gonna go through all of them, but this is what we call the due process of law, right? Uh, typically we need to, when we talk about due process of law, we're talking about the rights of the accused. We're talking about things that government just needs to do in order to um, satisfy the due process of law, right? Your rights as an American citizen is that they have to go through all these steps in order to prove your guilt and you do not have to prove your innocence, right? It helps if you can, uh, but you are not required by a court of law. You have to be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So that's why we're gonna be looking at the criminal justice process as an individual and not necessarily as a governmental system, right? Uh, but you can look at it from both ways. One TV show that did this very well, that was very popular about a year or so ago, was the Netflix series on O.J. Simpson, uh, starring, uh, what's his face, Ross from Friends, um, David Schwimmer, yeah, and John Travolta, and Nathan Lane was in it, oh, it was fantastic. Uh, you had Cuba Gooding Jr. The whole cast was amazing. Uh, so if you guys are uh, of a reasonable age with parent permission, I would recommend to check that out. All right. So let's jump into the criminal justice process. All right. So the first thing that needs to happen is an investigation. Right. Crimes are reported to the police. And so they pick it up from there. Right. And they are looking for evidence. Right. Um, they are looking mostly for evidence, but they're also looking for suspects, right? And so direct evidence is evidence that supports a fact without any interference, right? Those are like bullet casings, those are entrance and exit wounds, those are corpses, those are whatever um, proves that something happened at a specific place regardless of what somebody else says. Circumstantial evidence is, I, I like to liken it to gossip, right? It's information obtained indirectly uh, or not based on first at hand experience. It is basically just, you know, conjecture, right? It's somebody saying that they heard something or that they might have seen something, but they're not sure. Uh, witness testimony tends to fall in circumstantial. Unless there's hard evidence to back it up or direct evidence to back it up, most of the time circumstantial evidence alone is not enough to convict a person of a crime. Right. And the last thing that they're looking for is persons of interest or suspects. Right. And so these people are thought to be involved in the crime somehow, or a suspect is thought to have committed the crime. Right. And so once they have a suspect with enough evidence, um, they'll make arrests and they will charge the alleged criminals with something. Right. Um, the prosecutor will study the information given to them by the police departments and the police investigations and local courts will, uh, local and federal courts, really all courts, will assign a prosecutor, and the prosecutor will file charges. Um, arrests can be made after the charges are filed, um, and so for minor offenses, most people won't be arrested at all. So if it's something like um, driving uh, with a suspended license or, um, not paying a fine or things like that. Um, minor offenses usually don't require um, don't require an arrest, right? Um, hit and run where nobody was injured but property was damaged. Um, that that's you that's a charge that sometimes you know not all the time. Remember, I am not a lawyer, uh, but sometimes uh, is not an arrestable. It, it, it is an arrestable offense, they can arrest you for it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they will arrest you all the time, right? Uh, but I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and commit crimes anytime soon to test these theories, right? And so once charges have been brought against the defendant, the defendant is the person accused of doing the crime, right? Um, they are brought to an arraignment or an initial hearing, right? Um, these are hearings where the defendant learns more about their rights, the charges against them. Uh, they can make, uh, they can make, 
They can make plans to have an attorney present for their trial. Um, and if uh, it's necessary, uh, the judge will set bail um, if he feels that that is absolutely necessary, right? And bail is a, you know, a monetary amount to ensure that the um, defendant will be brought back for his or her um, trial, right? So the next period uh, is the period of discovery. So during discovery, both sides prepare by learning facts about the case, preparing their case, and sharing all of the evidence that will be going into the court case. So typically, uh, in a lot of court movies, uh, most famously, I think my favorite one being uh, My Cousin Vinny, right? They love to have this big surprise plot twist where it's very dramatic. Um, and they do that because it's Hollywood and because dramatic plot twists are more interesting than the sort of procedural nature of an actual courtroom trial, right? Uh, but typically both sides know all the evidence before they even get in the room, right? And they typically know the other person's argument um, before they get into the room, right? Um, and so what this means is because both sides are required to share all information the other side has, if that means the prosecutor has some evidence that could prove the innocence of the defendant, then they have to give that evidence. That's what we call as exculpatory evidence, right? Um, and so the government may offer the defendant a plea deal if they have a strong case, right? This is typically to avoid a trial because trials are lengthy and expensive and nobody really wants to do that. Or uh, typically what you'll see happen is they will offer a plea deal to someone with information. Uh, so for example, there was a meme that I believe it was the rapper Takashi69 uh, ratted out some of his friends and uh, got a better plea deal uh, and served less jail time. So, you know, um, they, they offer plea deals for all different kinds of things. And there's a big debate as to whether or not plea bargaining, plea dealing should be allowed because you're, you know, basically giving someone a less harsh sentence than they would normally get uh, because they, you know, uh, went along with everything. Other people say, no, it helps get other criminals off the street. So you know, just like everything, it's uh, complicated, right? And so after discovery, the preliminary hearing is where they set out, um, you know, pretty much how everything is going to be in the trial, right? Uh, once a defendant has entered into a plea of not guilty, preliminary hearing will be held prosecutor must show that there's enough evidence to charge the defendant. Uh, so this is kind of like a mini trial, right? They're not trying to prove that he's guilty. They're trying to prove that there's enough evidence that they could find him guilty, right? And so if the judge concludes that there's cause to believe that the crime was committed by the defendant, they'll schedule a trial. And if not, the judge can dismiss the charges, right? Uh, and this happens occasionally, right? If there's just not enough evidence uh, to support a case, right? Uh, the trial process is lengthy, but it, it goes through a lot of steps and it goes quick, right? Uh, so they go through jury selection. Both attorneys take part in choosing um, a jury that they feel reflects the community. Now, that being said, um, lawyers and attorneys on both sides are very tactical when it comes to uh, picking jury members, right? Uh, they are looking for people with certain biases. They're looking with people with certain um, feelings and emotions and trying to get them either on or off the jury bench in order to help their case or hurt their opponent's case, right? That being said, a lot of uh, attorneys practice preemptory challenge where, you know, they basically get a couple freebie um, choice like vetoes for jury members. Um, and that's still uh, a common practice across law, right? Uh, once a trial begins, they'll have opening straight statements. Both sides briefly tell their account of the events and they set the stage for their evidence. Then they do witness examination. They look at all of the evidence. They 
interview the witnesses. Um, they call it examination, not uh, interviews, but that's just a legal term, right? Um, then there's closing arguments, and then the jury will go and they will make their deliberations and deliver the verdict, right? So the jury has to find the person guilty or not guilty. Um, in order to be found guilty, they have to find it beyond a reasonable doubt, and they have to be unanimous, unanimous. If it is not a unanimous decision, then they uh, are called a hung jury, and it goes to a mistrial. They have to start this process all over again. So the legal process is very time consuming, very tedious, and so you'll see this is one of the main reasons why they try to go for a plea bargain most of the time. All right. So uh, let's say the criminal is found guilty. Next would come criminal sentencing. If the criminal is found not guilty, then yay, they get to go free, uh, assuming that they're innocent. Um, if they're not innocent, oh, well, you know, that one slipped away, I guess. All right. Uh, and so judges use all sorts of information to decide what a sentence should be. There is sentencing laws. So for example, during the war on drugs, there was a 25 year mandatory minimum for drug dealing, which meant that anyone caught with over an ounce of marijuana would be sentenced to at least 25 years. Um, and so we saw during the Obama administration, as well as the Trump administration, a lot of people, uh, getting their records expunged and released from federal prisons over um, nonviolent drug charges. So, you know, that, that's a factor that goes in there, right? Uh, if the criminal has a criminal record they've committed crimes before, that could be a big, big deciding factor for the judge, right? Uh, if the defendant has expressed any regret for the crime, um, then that could also be a big factor for whether or not the judge goes easy on them or hard on them. And then it also could uh, factor into the nature of the crime itself, right? Um, capital punishment, you know, the death penalty is usually reserved for only the most extreme crimes, things like murder, rape, um, and, and the like. So uh, typically you won't see a judge go, you know, they'll, they'll take the, the nature of the crime itself as a factor to decide. Right. And lastly, quite possibly the longest process for many, many criminals is the Court of Appeals. Right. So even after a defendant is found guilty, he or she can appeal to the circuit court if they believe that they were wrongly convicted or if the sentence was too harsh. And so the appeal is not another trial, but it's a chance to point out errors in the initial trial. Right. Um, so, for example, if there was some faulty evidence or uh, there was a biased jury or all, all sorts of different reasons um, that a trial could have not been fair. Um, you could end up with um, an appeals court changing something, right? Uh, so they might reverse a specific conviction, uh, the sentence might be altered, or a new trial might be ordered, right? And so it really depends on the situation. Right, but that is basically the legal justice system. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you guys found it informative. Um, next time we will be talking about uh, legal help and the rights of the accused and how you should always find a good lawyer. All right, guys, this was Mr. G's Law Study Classroom. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Please like and subscribe. Hit that little bell at the bottom if you want to get notifications for this. Uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow.